Hey, what's up everyone? Tim here from Everyday Tactical Vids. Today we're talking about this knife, which is the Tom Brown Jr. Tracker Knife. In this video, we're gonna compare this knife to a lot of other knives that are out there. And my goal is to give you a lot of information about this knife, so if you're thinking about purchasing it, you have all the info that you'll need. So we'll talk about the style of the blade, the different cutting edges, the thickness of the handle, different uses for the knife. Let's jump into it right now. All right, so a little background on the knife. It was designed by Tom Brown Jr. You can see the logo there. And uh, he's actually the guy who first got me into wilderness survival. So I had done stuff in the outdoors for a long time, but when I was 18, I found a book by Tom Brown Jr. on wilderness survival in a Barnes & Noble bookstore. I bought it, I read it, and I just fell in love with the idea of going out into the woods with a minimal amount of gear and being able to survive and really thrive out there. So um, Tom Brown Jr. has been a guy who's been an influence in the past for me in particular when it came to getting into wilderness survival. So this knife was designed by him. Uh, there's some discussion about were there other people who had similar designs before him, but I would say at this point, Tom Brown Jr. in conjunction with Topps, who's producing the knife, uh, is most well known as the designer for this style of knife. Some of the details on your knife, your end-to-end -end length is 11.88 inches, your blade length is 6.38 inches, and your cutting edge is 6.25 inches. Your thickness for the knife is 0.25 inches, so definitely a big hefty piece of steel. It is a full tang knife, meaning one piece of steel from the tip all the way to the end. 1095 for your steel, that's uh, something we'll talk about in a minute, and your weight is just about 21 ounces, so definitely a pretty heavy knife. You can see that the knife has the saw back there, which is common on uh, quite a few of Topps survival knives. Um, again, ultimately not made for being a full-fledged saw, but made for more notching when you're out there. If you gotta get through some wood, or maybe you have to cut notches for making traps, or uh, for other things you're doing out there in the woods. Let's talk about the blade here. Obviously a very unique style. So you've got basically one cutting edge here and then a secondary cutting edge here. Um, you do have just a little bit of that choil there so that you can, um, you can sharpen it all the way down to the end. How are you gonna sharpen this knife? Um, you can use a stone depending on the size of the stone. I generally find for a blade like this that using a sharpening rod is your best option. Now with a stone, obviously the challenge is gonna be getting your stone into basically, you know, where it transitions from this blade, part of the blade, to this part of the blade. Um, it's just gonna be some work. It's gonna take some time to figure out how to do that. Now you can see, it's not like that, you see the shiny part there on the, uh, the cutting edge. It's not like it stops and then starts again. So you can do that all in one shot. Just takes a little bit of time getting used to, um, to sharpening that up. It does come very sharp from tops. Uh, they do a great job sending it to you. Even though it's a big hefty blade, it comes to you nice and sharp. Now, like I said, I do find a sharpening rod is a, a better option for something that's got a lot of curves and angles. This is one I just picked up at Walmart. It was probably like maybe between eight and $12 or so. So it's got a couple different angles that it's showing you based on the, uh, the angle right here of this portion of the uh, upper part of the handle. But all that to say, it's gonna take a little bit of time for you to get used to having to, uh, to sharpen this knife, I think. But um, if it has a lot of functionality for you, it's worth putting in the time to, uh, to figure out how to sharpen it. Now, another option could be this, which is the Viking Whetstone. I believe I got this from Wazoo Survival Gear. And they also have uh, necklaces that are, they have a, um, this one's a little bit flatter all around. You can see the uh, 90 degree angles, but they have one that's got a uh, kind of a beveled edge, so which would be, uh, would be good for this. So there's, there's lots of different ways you can figure out how to sharpen it. Again, for most people, it's gonna take a little bit of time to become good at it. I don't think I'm an expert at sharpening strange angles uh, like this by any means, um, but I'm at the point where I can touch it up. And just a quick note, you shouldn't be spending, you know, hours and hours and hours having to resharpen the blade. You should use the knife for quite a bit and then be able to touch it up unless you're hitting rocks and getting tons of dings in it. Um, the Rockwell hardness for this and how Topps heat treats their knives should put you in a place, place where unless you're like hitting this thing regularly on rocks as you're chopping through things, that um, you should just be touching it up and not doing a ton of sharpening as the sun comes out and starts uh, really shining on the video here. So one of the reasons somebody might pick up a knife like this as opposed to something like the PR4 from SE is they want um, what Aaron over at Gideon's Tactical called like a multi-tool knife. So this thing can do some chopping, some slicing, some cutting. Uh, it's got those angles that give you a couple different options as far as functionality. A smaller knife like this is probably gonna be easier, not probably, almost definitely, it's gonna be easier to handle, um, but it just doesn't give you the same amount of overall functionality. 
So let's talk about chopping uh, with this knife. Now to talk about chopping, we want to talk about the, the far end of the blade, but also the handle as well. So if you're using the knife for some basic push cuts, looking at the handle, you're probably going to grip it like this and do some push cuts. If you're going to do some chopping, you're probably going to choke back here, run a lanyard through here, maybe put three fingers on there, one finger underneath, and do some chopping. Now, again, this is the portion of the blade, probably right down toward this end of it, where you're gonna be hitting the wood as you're doing the chopping. Because of the weight, it is quite a good chopper for a knife. It's not gonna compare with an ax, it's just not meant to do that. Um, but if you choke back here, three fingers, and then your pinky underneath, and chop like this, you're definitely gonna get some good chopping power with the, uh, with the knife. Now, I would say, if this came back probably another half an inch, it would be an even better chopper, just because of where where you're kind of the angle of your hand when you hit if it was just a little bit further back it would just be it'd be more effective and have a little bit more effect of like a kukri in that even though it doesn't have the same style blade the the sweep would be in in an even sweeter spot when it comes to actually hitting on that wood now i found choking back with my hand like this like i said works i also found that if you hold it with a normal grip and kind of like this and then just let your hand be a little bit more free in the wrist area um, you can get some good chopping in there one of the things that's a little bit challenging about chopping with this is just the length of the handle and the length of the blade so compare it to like an se hungless which is really my favorite outdoor survival tool i mean you can see you've got probably another you know three plus inches on the hungless which means that when you're chopping you're not going to bash your hand you know on something because the chopping portion of the blade is going to be more out here and you're away from bumping your hand say on a tree or something. I don't know if you can see it, but yeah, I've got a little cut there. I was doing some chopping with the tracker yesterday and I just bumped my hand a bunch of times uh, because of the length of the blade. Again, comparing the two, you can see that you can see the difference there. Now, I love the hungless. It is a neutral handle. This one's got more texture. This one's got a longer blade. You don't have all the different angles on this as compared to the tracker. So again, pluses and minuses. You've got a more compact as far as shorter knife with the, uh, with the tracker. Um, as a chopper, this has got even more weight than the hungless does. So I think you're going to have an advantage for this one as far as that heft. But again, just got to be careful that you're not bashing your hand against something if you're doing chopping with this knife. Now if you compare the tracker to the Steel Eagle 107C Delta class, um, again longer blade for this, uh, for the, um, the Steel Eagle, but it's, uh, it's lighter and also you don't have that big sweep. So you can still chop with this knife, it's just that this one because of the sweep in that blade is going to be more effective. So again we're talking about kind of like uh, you know a multi-use knife out there in the woods. So this guy is going to be pretty effective as a chopper. When it comes to being a chopper that's a knife, I think it's going to be toward the head of its class. When you move into a machete, an axe, um, like the Topps Kukri, which I like a lot, that's, that to me is a different class of, of cutting tool. When you move into a Kukri, you're not talking about a knife, a straight up knife at least. When you move into a machete, you're not, not talking about a straight up knife. So that's just something to keep in mind. It's definitely going to be an effective chopper when it comes to a knife. It's going to be more effective than like the PR4 that I showed you before. Um, but if they could have moved that back just a little bit, maybe a quarter of an inch, half an inch, I think, uh, or I guess extended that sweep, it would have been even more effective as a, uh, as a chopper. All right, let's talk about the sweep of the blade as far as maybe game prep. So for me, it's about fish. I do a lot of fishing and um, I'm gonna be preparing fish out there in the field. So if you choke up like this, you can definitely, you know, cut through the scales on the fish and then, then, then do some of that prep work. It's not gonna work nearly as well, something like this, which is from Black Scout Survival. I think this came in a battle box to me. I mean, this thing is definitely made for more of that, more of that work. Um, you do have, you know, you have sort of a similar similar sweep there, but this one's thinner, it's just gonna be easier to handle to do that work. It's not that you can't do it with this, I would just say be aware that if you've done a lot of chopping with this and the blade starts to dull up because of that, then you gotta make sure you sharpen up really nicely before you start doing that, um, that prep work. I will tell you that when you're holding this knife, just gotta be careful of that saw back. It's not razor sharp, but it can definitely beat your hands up if you're holding it like this, even just squeezing it like I am right now, 
it's definitely making my, my fingers feel uncomfortable. So make sure you got a good solid grip on it, maybe throw some gloves on when you're using that portion of the blade. I wanna say real quick, I did hear the other day Joe Flowers, who's well known in the knife industry, he did say right where the two angles shift right there is a good spot for, uh, for using for if you were you know dressing something out in the field. So just a couple thoughts there. Now the other thing about having a blade that's got a sweeping edge like that is that you should be able to kind of slash through things. Now because of the thickness of the blade, it's not gonna work like what I've got here is the full-sized um, Atayal from uh, Work Tough Gear. So you can see, again, they both have a sweep, but this one's thinner and because it's longer, I'll, I would be able to slash through things much more like a machete with this one than I would with this one. Again, it's going to do more of that slashing than just like a straight drop point or a spear point, I think. Um, but not like this just because of the thinness and the length of this blade and that sweep is a little bit longer on, on uh, this one than it is this one. So again, it's all about use and what you're going to be doing out there in the field. If you're going to be doing a lot of slashing, go with a machete or something with a, a blade more like this. If you need to maybe do a little bit of that slashing and then again, some of this type of work as well, then the, uh, the tracker might be a good option for you. Let's move into talking about this more straight part straight portion of the uh, the blade. Um, you'll see in the footage that I roll in here that I jam this into a uh, in the, into a log and then pull a stick against it just to make some feathers. Um, it's definitely better at making feathers in that portion than it is with the curved portion. Just it just you feel you have more control. You know exactly what the angle of the blade is. It's not if you move slightly up on the curve, you're going to get a different cut. Slightly down on the curve, whereas that pretty much that straight angle there is good to go. Um, this and doing detail work with it is not gonna be the same as like doing it with my Benchmade Bushcrafter here. Just the lightness of the blade, the thinness of the blade, it just allows, the, the cut is just a different experience. So with a saber grind on this one, um, you're gonna be able to get some good feathers, like I said, if you lock it in there and then um, you know pull the stick against it, but it's just not as thin as say the Benchmade Bushcrafter. Um, and just because of the weight of the knife, as you're holding it in your hand, you're maybe doing some push cuts and trying to get that angle as you're maybe carving tent, tent um, stakes or maybe you're carving something for a trap. Um, it just, because it's heavier, it's a little bit harder to control as opposed to something like this where, you know, you got your hand locked in, get your thumb out there, and you just got, I mean, it's a notable difference in the weight between these two. Um, the other thing about this, I will say though, is that this section up here on top of the blade, I mean, you can really get your thumb on there. And because the blade's thick, it doesn't feel like your thumb's falling off on one side or the other. As you're doing those, those push cuts and some of that detail work, it is quite comfortable in hand. I didn't find it was fatiguing for me to hold that way. Um, I did find if I held the knife, maybe like this with my thumb on the jimping, and then did some push cuts with this portion of the blade, my hand would get tired more quickly than if I was holding it like this and doing push cuts on that flattened portion of the, or the straight portion of the blade. Another knife from Topps, um, super, super compact and lightweight is the Topps Light Trekker. And uh, this thing definitely has, it's got a sweep there. It doesn't just come straight back for a long time on the top there. But uh, again, like this one, if you wanna do some more of those detail cuts, it's gonna be a little bit easier with this or notably easier because this is so small, thin and lightweight. I will say though, the fact that you pretty much have just like a, a flat grind on this versus the saber grind, you're gonna get some nice feathers off the, uh, the straight portion of the blade there when you're working it. All right, let's talk about the sawback here. Uh, one thing I think that is underestimated for uh, using the sawback is that it's not just for notches. You can actually cut into a branch or a tree or something, and then once you get far enough into it, you can actually snap the branch off with more precision without having all kind of like broken ends than you can if you're chopping. If you're chopping, chopping you're gonna get a big chunk, you know, section of the uh, branch that pops out like a big V, and you can get through it probably more quickly than using the sawback, but it's gonna be a bit more chaotic as far as what the end of that piece of wood looks like. If you saw maybe a third of the way, half of the way through that wood, then you can hold the, say this is the branch, hold the branch and snap it up. It's gonna be a bit more of a clean cut that you can use um, you know, for whatever you're doing out there in the woods. Just compare here real quick between the Steel Eagle as the geese fly off there in the distance. You can see, I wouldn't say it's literally right over my head. I wouldn't say it's twice as long on the uh, Steel Eagle, but it's maybe another third longer than the, uh, than the Topps uh, Tracker. This one I used, I mean, you can check out my video, I'll put a link down below. Um, this is a quite effective as far as using the sawback to cut into a, uh, a branch and make a notch. 
Again, not ultimately built to be a saw. I do think that it's cool to have that on the back. Some people say, well, if you took it off, it'd be easier to put your hand up there. Like I said before, you know, my hand up here, I'm not gonna be using this type of angle, I think, for cutting nearly as much as holding it normally, you know, with the handle here or choking back like this. So I think it's great to have the saw back up there. I would actually, I would keep it. I would never take that off. Um, some people think it's a waste, but for me, it's a useful enough tool from time to time that it's nice to have that there. Now, if you're looking for a real saw, I would definitely recommend something like this is the Silky Big Boy 2000. Um, you're not gonna be doing tons of little precision cuts with this. I'd like a Baco Laplander for something like that. But this thing is made to be a saw. I mean, length of pull, just take a look. Not even close. Uh, it's thinner. I mean, this is made to be a saw versus this is not really made to be a saw. This is made to give you another additional tool while in the woods. But if you need a saw, get a Silky, get a uh, Baco Laplander. That's definitely where you wanna go. Let's talk about the handle a little bit. So you've got some jimping here. I would call it like medium to mild. It definitely, it definitely didn't beat up my hand that much. Um, I would say for a bigger knife like this, having a little bit of jimping is nice. Um, I did find, I got the Steel Eagle here again. The, I don't know if you can tell, but the jimping on this one is much more smoothed out than on this one. So this one actually hurt my hand a little bit. And when I was chopping with this and I was choked back like this, there's jimping right there on the handle. And that, that was definitely... It was cutting into my hand a bit when I had gloves on, it didn't bother me. Um, but I do feel like the jimping on this one is appropriate. Again, that's like a, that's, some people like jimping, some people don't. I would say because this is so mild, it's not gonna beat your hand up that much. So I think that's, it's good to have that there. I do like the fact, I'm just looking at it here. I do like as we move into talking about the handle, the white liner that you have there. I think that's really cool. Um, the jimping is minor, I think it's effective. When it comes to the handle, you do have a couple different ways that you can actually hold it for different types of cuts. So your primary, for your, you know, your basic push cuts, you're gonna be holding it probably like this. So first finger here, second finger here, and then your third and fourth finger down below. And then I'm gonna put my thumb up on the top there as opposed to here. I do find if I choke all the way up, and, uh, or I've got my first finger, second finger, and then third and fourth down in the, the bigger cutout, when I try to hold it like that, it's a little bit less comfortable. When I put my thumb up top here, that's where my hand wants to naturally fall. So um, I do think that you've got enough space for your first. The second, I think they should have made a little bit smaller here. It's a little bit odd how I've got my first finger there, my second finger is kind of further back, and then my third and fourth. So I would like to see them bring this forward a little bit. I doubt they're gonna make a change because the knife's been so popular, but for me, that would have been a, uh, a better fit. So you got your one, one grip like this for you know maybe doing some cutting and whittling. You can certainly hold it like this, especially if you're using this portion, that curved portion of the blade to maybe do some cuts. Um, and then choking back here, you can do your first finger and then your second, third, and even fourth, I guess, in that bigger groove to do some chopping. I do find throw a lanyard on here and then do maybe two or three fingers and then more so like this. That's gonna make it more effective for, uh, for chopping. As far as your thickness of the handle, I think this is great. Some, one of my challenges I find with top knives is that the handles are too thin on some of the knives. I think the Silent Hero is a great looking knife. It's just too thin for me when it comes to, uh, when it comes to the handle and I'm squeezing it and I just feel like my hand is fatiguing. This one fills out my hand nicely so as I'm using it, I don't feel like it's fatiguing uh, quickly. Looking at the Steel Eagle once again, um, I like the thickness on this one as well, maybe even a little bit more, but I do find, um, it's a little, it may be a little bit too thick for me, which is pretty rare for most knives. Um, I'm generally wanting it to be thicker as opposed to thinner. Here we've got the SE PR4. You can see highly textured. This one is, um, is definitely thinner and uh, it allows you because of the texture to kind of lock your hand in and get a really solid grip on it. Because it's the, the top of the, um, the spine of the knife is thin too. When I put my hand up there and because it's 90 degrees so you can throw a spark, that is less comfortable than on the tracker. So I'm gonna be holding this knife more like this if I'm doing cuts, or this as opposed to like this. Um, but that's definitely notably thinner than the, uh, the tracker. Here's a quick side-by-side -side comparison. So yeah, the tracker is definitely thicker than this one. Fills out the hand more. Now for me, I like a neutral handle in general. I don't mind the grooves, or the finger grooves on the tracker, but the SE Hungless is the standard for me. The Rat 7 from Ontario Knife Company, similar. Um, I just like a blocky handle like this, rounded here. Even SE has their new 3D contoured handles, and I think I'm just sticking with the original. I just, I like that kind of neutral, 
blocky, chunky handle. And even with this one, you know, I can I can choke up if I need to. I can bring my hand back a little bit. I can do two fingers, two fingers under, and then throw the lanyard on for some more aggressive chopping. So, you know, when you compare the tracker to this, I'd prefer a more neutral handle. But I would say the tracker doesn't fail by any means than that. It's just that I would say this would be my top choice, the tracker second, and then going on to some of the other knives I showed you later down the uh, later down the um, the rating scale. All right, let's talk about the sheath a little bit here. So, Kydex. You've got two of these spring steel clips. The idea is you're gonna mount this scout style on your back and it's made ultimately for right hand carry or for right hand use. So it's gonna fit on the small of my back behind me like this and I'm gonna draw it out like so. Now, can you rotate these and carry it on your side? Absolutely. So you could carry this on your left hand side. That means drawing it out and probably switching hands. It's not the end of the world, uh, but if you're gonna invest the money in this knife and you don't wanna carry it scout style, then you probably, don't wanna, you probably want to invest in a, a custom Kydex. Uh, definitely check out Black Bear Custom Kydex. He makes awesome, awesome gear. Um, this thing, the reason that they set it up like this for scout style with these two clips is just to distribute the weight. You know, at over 20 ounces, to have it on one, one clip on your side, it may feel kind of heavy and kind of not dragging you down, but it's a notable weight versus this is gonna distribute the weight a little bit more. Um, the knife is pretty nicely balanced, so it's not like all the weight is in the handle, and so even if you put it on your uh, on your back scout style that's gonna be hanging this way, um, it's pretty nicely distributed. You do get some cordage there that you can actually use for, you know, if you wanna make a bow drill fire, if you wanna run a lanyard here. I will note on the topic of the bow drill fire, there is no bow drill divot on either side of the knife, which I find a little bit interesting because this is generally considered like a survival a survival knife, so you would think they would include that. But I think they didn't want to affect the uh, you know how the handle felt because you have so many different grip angles when you're using this knife. So I would say overall the Kydex is nice. The overall build is nice. If you don't like it scout style, you're probably going to have to invest in another uh, another sheath. But if you're investing in this knife, you're already putting some money out there, so um, it's probably worthwhile for you to get another custom sheath made. And I'll put a link down below to uh, a couple videos I've done with Black Bear Custom Kydex and also the link over to his website as well. Let's talk about the steel and the overall wear of the knife. So I've used this knife quite a bit and you can see, I mean, it's a little bit hard to pick up on camera. Um, I haven't used this for like, you know, five years or something, but it's the, the coating's holding up really nicely. So I like that a lot. It is available in a couple different colors. Uh, they did have an S35VN, I think, or maybe it was the S30V, I think it was S35VN, uh, version of this for an anniversary. Um, but 1095 is a standard. Now here's what I would say to you. Um, Essie and Tops are great companies. They make great outdoor knives, great survival knives, and they use a lot of 1095. They do use other steels as well, but that should tell us something about what a good steel 1095 is. Keeps a good edge. It's relatively easy to sharpen out in the field. I would say it's pretty easy to sharpen out in the field as long as you're familiar with how to use a, a sharpening stone or a sharpening rod. So I like the fact that they use 1095. Um, S35 VN is a great steel. It, it'll stay sharp for a long time. It is harder to sharpen. Um, with this style of knife and the thickness, I think S35 VN would be a beast. Um, I don't know if you've seen the video, but with S35 VN on the SE3, Patrick Rollins broke that knife and he was really putting it through a massive stress test. S35 VN is gonna be more brittle than your 1095. The other thing about your steel is that the way they have the Rockwell hardness is that you're gonna get more flex the way that Topps does their, um, their, their heat treat. You're gonna get more flex in this knife, so it's gonna bend before it breaks. That's another advantage to 1095. So uh, once you're comfortable with sharpening that angle of the blade there, I think 1095 is a, uh, is a great steel. And um, I, would, I would stick with that. You know, If they went to something else, I would, I would be less likely to wanna to buy this. 1095 I think is a good steel based on this knife, how it's gonna be used, and being able to sharpen it out in the field. So who is this knife for? Like I said before, citing the work of Aaron from Gideon's Tactical, he talked it like it's, about it like it's a multi-tool or a multi-use knife uh, for those who are out in the woods. I think that's true. I do think it does a lot of the jobs quite well to good. I don't think it does anything great. It's not gonna be a machete, but it can do some of those slashing cuts. It's not gonna be a, a, a kukri or a hefty chopper, but it's gonna do quite well at some chopping, just not as well as something that's designed completely for that. It's gonna do some of that detail work, just not as well as you know some other knives. Again, like if you really need to do a ton of notching or carving, that's just a big blade, and no matter how you hold it, 
it's from where your hand is to where the tip of the blade is, it's a little bit, it's not a little bit, it's quite far out there, as opposed to, you know, I wanna be holding here and have the tip of the blade here to be doing those little notching cuts and things like that. So again, I'd go with like the PR4, the Benchmade Bushcrafter, the Topps Light Trekker. Uh, one of my favorites is the RB3 from Essie. So yeah, if you're doing tons of little cuts, then I would go with something different. If you're gonna do some little cuts, some big cuts, some chopping, some feather sticking, some whittling, I think this could be a, uh, a good option for you. I honestly think the biggest challenge for, the biggest two challenges for people with this knife is gonna be the sharpening and then also just the weight of it. Um, I think some people are just gonna say, it's too much weight for me to carry around. I wanna have something lighter. For the weight of this, you could have an SE Hungless and something smaller. You could like have an SE Hungless and an SE Azula and that weight is gonna be probably still even a little bit, little bit less than this uh, when you combine those two, but you're getting different functionality from those two knives. I do think the concept of the tracker is really cool in that it can do a lot of things in one knife. Um, one thing I keep saying to people when, when I talk to them kind of one-on-one -on -one about survival is um, I like a compact knife, I like a small knife, but I find when I'm actually out working on survival skills, like I'm gonna do an overnight, I want something that's gonna chop actually. That's where my one of my first go-tos because if I'm making a shelter, I need to chop some branches to get some bedding down. If I'm making a shelter and I gotta get the, the um, wood to the right size to you know make a, a lean-to or something like that, having a little dinky knife and trying to beaver chew through it is just a hassle as opposed to chopping with a knife like this. So I think this is actually quite a good survival knife and like I'm telling you something you probably already know because this has been a super popular knife. Um, the, the challenge is gonna be the weight and I think people are gonna be a little bit frustrated learning how to sharpen it, but once you get good at those, the, uh, the sharpening process, I think probably its functionality overall is significant and so the weight will be less of an issue. Now this is an investment, this one's gonna run you, I mean, there are different versions and sizes of the tracker, but you're talking over 200 bucks for, for a big hefty piece of steel um, made in the USA from Topps, so it's not cheap to buy it, you can buy it used or you know, trade with somebody obviously, but um, I do think it's quite a functional knife. And um, yeah, I've liked, I've liked using it. And you'll see, well, I don't know if you'll see, but I'm telling you, I'll be using it more in the future just to put it through the paces and test it out uh, quite a bit. I do find the, uh, the sheath to function well for me. I like the fact that it distributes the weight. Um, but this is the type of thing, again, if I were to say this is gonna be one of my top two or three go-to knives, I would definitely invest. And, uh, and get a nice Kydex sheath or maybe a leather sheath made for it. All right, guys, I wanna hear from you now. If you own one of the uh, Topps Tracker knives, let me know whether it's this size or one of the smaller sizes. Let me know your experience with it. And uh, yeah, what have you liked? What would you change? You know, there is a possibility, even though it's a very popular knife from Topps, that if enough people give them feedback about a couple tweaks, that they might make, you know, the Tracker 2.0 or something like that. So yeah, let me know and I'll pass that word on to uh, onto Topps. Let's see your thoughts on the Topps Tom Brown Tracker. Thanks for watching the video, everybody. I look forward to your feedback in the comment section. As always, we are on all social media, so check us out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr, and Vero as well. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to Everyday Tactical Vids. Click that little red subscribe button and then click the bell so you get notifications about our latest videos when, they, uh, when they're available out there on the interwebs. All right, we got more videos coming soon on survival, on everyday preparedness, and things of that nature, so, uh, so stay tuned. Have a great day, everybody. Take care.